I was saying earlier that today I'm going to teach about how to save your family or how to rescue them from the claws of hell. Amen. This is a very important subject because this is something that mothers, fathers, sisters, aunties, uncles, every single person goes through that has come to Jesus. It's truly by the grace of God that somebody can be born again and their whole family actually is born again. Many a times it's not the case. Many a times you'll be pushed out, you'll be rejected, people will turn on you simply because simply because you came to the knowledge of Jesus, everybody else will push you out. These are things that really happen. But I am about to give you a key by the Spirit of God that is going to change everything Amen. that you're about to hear today. Amen. It's going to change your prayer life. It's going to change the way you actually tackle bringing people to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So I need each and every one of you to be ready. I need each and every one of you to be prepared. I want each and every one of you to be in the knowledge of the truth of God. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So I want everybody to share this as many times as you can. And I will explain something to you. Number one. The biggest hurdle that everybody faces when you are the Christian of the family or the born again of the family and other people are either not living the life that God has ordained for them or they have rejected God completely or walked away from God. The number one thing that you experience is you realize that they don't listen to you. When you speak, it is like they shut their ears towards you. But there is something that you are ignorant of, and I'm sorry to use that word, you are ignorant of, that is making you not understand why, you, you, why they cannot listen to you. Yeah. It is not a demon that is stopping them from listening to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to tell you. Many of you think, oh, they are covered so much in darkness and they cannot be saved. I just leave them in the hands of God. And Let me tell you the truth. You also were in sin one day and you, yeah, God yeah, saved yeah. you. How did he do it? Jesus. How did God rescue you when you were in sin? The Bible says, the Lord commended his love towards us while we were still yet sinners. So our sin was never the hindrance of God coming to us. The question is how did God come to us and how did we get saved? If you analyze and come to the understanding of how you came to receive Jesus, you will understand how easy it is to bring people to Jesus. Amen. I wish more people would share this because I'm about to go somewhere now. You see, God has his ways. And anyone that wants to be a benefit to God must understand the ways of God. Anyone who does not understand the ways of God is bound to fail. How did God reach you? How did God rescue you? The Bible says no one is beyond the salvation of God. No one is beyond the rescue of God. But many of us, we have written off family members, brothers and sisters, that they will never, if they ever get saved, it is a miracle. Of course, we, anybody coming to God is a miracle. The greatest miracle was the cross. Amen. So there are people who, their family members have been such big trouble that you have completely written them off. So how does this thing work? Yeah. Let's go to the Bible very quickly. Let's, let's look at uh, scripture real quickly. I want you to go to Luke chapter, I believe this is in Luke chapter 10 verse 2. And then I will break down something. Amen. Luke chapter 10 verse 2. Who's going to read? Bri, are you there? 
Oh, you got it? Oh. Mm. So, yeah, it's redemption. Mm -hmm. The harvest truly is great. Mm -hmm. The laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. One more time. Therefore say ye unto them, uh -huh. the harvest truly is great. Uh -huh. But the laborers are few. Uh -huh. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Okay, read it one more time. Therefore said he unto them, mm -hmm. The harvest truly is great, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. One more time. Therefore said he unto them, mm -hmm. The harvest truly is great, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. One last time. Therefore said he unto them, mm -hmm. The harvest truly is great, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Yes. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Your biggest mistake is that you are praying for people to get saved instead of praying for the laborers that are assigned to them. Amen. Jesus never said pray for the harvest. He said the harvest is ripe. Yes. But the problem is who is going to harvest them. That's good. Yeah. You have been praying for my uncle to get saved, my mother to get saved, my children to get saved. Yet the Bible never told you to pray for them to get saved. Yeah, yeah. There are harvests that are ripe. But there is a specific person that is assigned to reap them, to harvest them. So you have been praying the wrong prayer the whole time. Thinking that that is how somebody is going to get saved because you are fasting, because you are doing this. But the Bible is telling you clearly, hmm. it is a laborer that is needed for, for a harvest that is already, uh, uh, for, for, for a harvest that is plentiful. Yes, yes. When, you, when your tree has bore fruits, you don't pray for the fruits. You need somebody to get those fruits out of the tree for them to be a benefit to people. Yes. Some of you have fasted in vain. So good, help us. Some of you have cried in vain. Mm. Jesus. Instead of praying for the laborers, how do we know that the harvest is plenty and the harvest is full? We know that everybody is looking for answers. We know that everybody is looking for solutions. We know that somebody is looking for healing. We know somebody is looking for transformation. We know these people's needs are ready, their need is the call to Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. But who is going to bring Jesus to them is the problem. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you something. Go to John chapter 1. Start reading from verse 2. I want to show you something. John chapter 1, begin reading from verse 2. John chapter 1, begin reading from verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, mm -hmm. and bear witness, mm -hmm. and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Not first John, just John. Oh. Yeah. Just John chapter 1 verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh -huh. All things were made by him. Uh -huh. And without him was not anything made that was made. That's talking about Jesus. Uh huh. Keep going. In him was life, mm -hmm. and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of all men. Uh huh. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And the darkness cannot understand it. There was a man sent from God. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John whose name was John, the same came for a witness. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That through him all men might believe. So nobody can believe Jesus without a man. Mm. Uh, you guys didn't catch it. God wants to come to the world, but he's not coming until he sends a man that will bear witness of him that men will come to believe when he comes. 
So in reality, you cannot give somebody Jesus without a man. So maturity. Maturity. Understands, if I speak to somebody about Jesus and they don't listen to me, I am immediately understand I am not the witness that was sent to them. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I wish more people would share this. I'm trying to show you how easy it is to save people. (laughs) This thing is simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This thing is very simple. This thing is very simple. So John was sent to bear witness. Jesus is sending John to bear witness of him. That through the witness of John, all men will come to believe. Mm. Keep reading, my brother. Keep reading. Check this out. He was not that light. He was not that light. But was sent to bear witness of that light. It is emphasizing that John was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light. That was the true light. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Even though Jesus is the one that gives light to every man that comes on earth, Mm -hmm. he cannot witness about himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That says every disciple that came to Jesus Mm -hmm. was because of John. You guys didn't catch it. (laughs) When Jesus stopped at one of the at Luke and told him, Follow me, or Matthew, follow me, they followed him because of John. Remember, even John told some of his disciples, follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus could have no influence unless somebody went to testify ahead of him. God has sent you as a light into your family. But you cannot witness for yourself. That is why your family cannot listen to you. Somebody didn't hear what I said. Wow. Your family does not listen to you because you are the light that God has sent into that family. Amen. Wow. So you need somebody else to bear witness of what you have experienced that they have Amen. seen. Yeah. Then it confirms that what God gave you is really true and they will want it. Yeah. And they will want it because they are the ones who are sent to witness to them. Mm. Who is a witness? A witness is somebody that is testifying about a truth mm. and a fact that exists. Yeah. Everything must be established in the presence of what? Two people. Two or three people. So you are trying to be the judge, the jury, and to confirm things by yourself without a witness. It will never happen. It is breaking spiritual protocol. Unless somebody bears witness of what happened to you on your behalf, no one is going to believe or want your Jesus. I wish somebody could get this. Amen. Mm. You know, zeal is a good thing, but zeal without knowledge is foolishness. Mm-hmm. Mm. And zeal without knowledge can bring strife instead of good. Mm-hmm. Some of you have been saying, oh, my family, they are demon possessed, they are fighting me. No, 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 no. You are forcing yourself onto them, but you need a witness. Some of you, you have actually pushed them away even more. Mm -hmm. Thinking that you want to bring them close and you're thinking you're fighting demons. But you don't realize the Bible says that you do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. But you are fighting people saying you need Jesus. But you don't understand that your life must have a witness that will confirm your life to them. Somebody asked, said, uh, does that go for in-laws? Absolutely, for everybody. Your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your cousin, your uncle. That's all where it is. Wow. This is why you keep shouting 
and no one is listening to you. The more you shout, the more they cover their ears. And then when they listen to somebody else, you say, oh, how come you listen to them? They are not even anointed like me. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It was not for you. (laughs) It was not for you. It was not for you. An example. You believe me to be a prophet because God has testified of me. That when I prophesy, you know for sure this guy is a prophet because God is actually speaking to him. Things that only me and God know. So he is a, God is witnessing Mm -hmm. to me, proving that this man is from God. That is what the Bible says. And Jesus, a man approved of God by signs and wonders. That's what Peter was saying. A man approved by God. Meaning God is testifying, I have sent this man. This man did not come on his own, but I am the one that sent him. Mm. Is somebody listening to this? So Jesus has testified about prophet Lovi Elias. God has testified about me. So the reason why you can believe and say, you know what, Prophet Lovi has truly been sent by Jesus is because there is something confirming that very fact that is witnessing to you. If this man can know something that is hidden so deep, it means God sent him. An example, yesterday I prophesied, I was uh, ministering for my brother, Prophet Joel, and, uh, and, uh, and I prophesied to so many people over the phone. People I've never met, people I don't know, specifically with names and issues they're going through. And that was yesterday. People can rewatch those videos and see. That is God witnessing that I'm truly a prophet because a prophet only speaks of what God is saying. Amen. <laughs> My daughter Darian says, Literally, Papa, you could drop the mic right here. (laughs) What is the fastest way to make money right now? It is selling on Amazon. My daughter Darian says, literally, Papa, you could drop the mic right here. (laughs) So... The key is to have maturity, to understand. If I'm talking to somebody about Jesus, Mm. are they shutting me off or are they acting differently? That means I just need to behave Mm. according to what God has called me to be. I don't need to pretend. I don't need to act. I just need to be what God wants me to be. Do you realize I have so many people that followed me, not because I Jesus them out, Mm. They just saw me speaking and they're like, why is your words drawing me too much to you? Mm. Then they discover I'm born and they say, "Ah, I've been trying to follow. I didn't know that it could be like this. Not because I spoke my actions. And there was a witness that somebody already spoke to them about Mm -hmm. Jesus. So I came to confirm that message without even speaking to them. And immediately they were drawn. They followed God. My brother, keep reading from where we were. Watch this. This is extra deep. (laughs) He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Why didn't the world know him? He had no witness. Mm. The mountains cannot witness about him. God needs a person in the world to witness for him. Seeing the stars is not a witness. It confirms there is somebody powerful. But who is that person? You need a witness. Keep reading, watch this. He came unto his own, Uh and his own received him not. Notice this, there are two things that happen. Jesus came into his own, he he came into the world, Uh and the world knew him not. 
the, the world didn't know him. But when he went to his own, his own rejected him. You're not catching it. There are people who don't know anything about God. And there are people who can hear about God, but they will reject you. Keep reading, watch this. But as many as received him, as many as received him, to them gave he power to uh, become the sons of God, uh -huh. even to them that believe on his name. Uh -huh, keep going. Which were born uh -huh. not of blood, uh -huh. nor of the will of the flesh, uh -huh. nor of the will of man, uh -huh. but of God. Uh -huh. And the word was made flesh uh -huh. and dwelt among us. Notice before the word was made flesh. There were people who witnesses the witness that people could believe. Keep reading. What's this? And we beheld his glory. Uh -huh. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Uh -huh. Full of grace and truth. Uh -huh. John bare witness of him. Uh -huh. And cried, uh -huh. saying, This was he of whom I spake. So everyone that ever believed Jesus in his lifetime was because of John. If John was not there, the 12 would have never received Jesus. And if the 12 never received Jesus, me and you would never get saved. Mm. You and me right now know about Jesus because somebody told us about Jesus. Wow. Wow. So if there is no witness, no one can come to Jesus. It's really that simple. Some people were born in Christian families and still didn't listen to their family even though they loved Jesus. They looked at them like hypocrites. Yeah. They looked at them as people who are forcing things on people. The reason why they did not listen is because these people imposed themselves. Right. Instead of revealing Jesus Amen. so that somebody can witness to what is going on with them. Right. Wow. You can never save somebody unless there is a witness to what yeah. their life what they have been seeing needs support from a person who is not even involved but to testify. Mm -hmm. I know that truth and I am that truth. Look at me. Amen. Amen. So the question is this. When God wanted to deliver the children of Israel, yeah. the Bible says this. <laughs> Let's go, to the, let's go to the scriptures. This is going to be good. This is going to be extra deep. This should be in Exodus. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're so good. Why are you so sweet? Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 3. Now, I want you to read verse 7, from verse 7. Amen. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7. Watch this. Check this out. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. I have surely seen the affliction of my people mm -hmm. which are in Egypt. Okay. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Yes. For I know their sorrows. Mm -hmm. Am I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians? And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and uh -huh. the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Keep reading. Now therefore, behold, mm -hmm. the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Mm -hmm. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Mm -hmm. Come now, therefore, mm -hmm. and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. How does that make sense? God has been watching their suffering for 400 years, doing nothing, mm. waiting for a witness to go for him. You people are not getting it. God is saying, I have seen their suffering. I have seen their cries. I have seen what is going on. And I have come down to deliver them. Now come here, Moses. I will send you to bring my people. What? God, will it not be easier if you just descend upon Egypt with fire and brimstone and say, Pharaoh, let my people go now. No one will listen. No one will believe. 
God had to send somebody that will bear witness that the God of their fathers actually lives. But where Moses met the God of their fathers, no one else ever met God at that mountain. It was only Moses that met God in that place. But he came in the name of a God that they know. Yet Moses was raised in the house of Egypt. But in order for the children of Israel to come out of bondage, God sent Moses. He didn't send Aaron. No one would listen to Aaron, even though Aaron was a priest. No one would listen to Miriam, even though she was a prophet. People would only listen to Moses because he came from outside. And came to bear witness of a God they know. I need people to share this because we are going somewhere. Amen. I want somebody to think about that. I need people to share this. Is this making sense for somebody now? Amen. Is this making sense now? Amen. So God... So God can only function if there is a witness. Mm. I hope people are seeing where you went wrong now. Amen. I hope you see where you went wrong now. Amen. I hope you understand where you went wrong now. Amen. This is where the issue is. This is where the issue is. This is where the issue is. What are you doing to make sure that God brings your family to God? Mm. Let me tell you a spiritual truth. The same way you got to God, some of you had grace that through your family you just came to God. I saw, I remember, I saw this article about a woman who was married with three children all of a sudden, and she was a pastor's child, and she she was a pastor, and all of a sudden she became a, 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 a lingerie model, dropped all dropped all uh, ministry stuff. She started doing like uh, weird movies and stuff. And she said she's uh, 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 the alphabet people with, you know, all these things. I don't even know what to say. She just became all these things. And she said, this is all who I really am. Everything I was doing as a child, it was because I was told. That means she never really witnessed. She never really experienced God. Mm -mm. You see, no one can meet God and turn from God. It's actually impossible. Wow, amen. If you ever hear somebody say, I used to be a Christian, they were never a Christian. Mm. You cannot meet God and actually change. Come it's on. impossible. Come on. It's like if you have ever had a cut, you know how it hurts to be cut. Mm-hmm. You will never want to be cut again. You know exactly what it feels like. Right. But somebody who has never played with fire, the fire looks very attractive to touch it. It is the same thing with walking with God. Mm. There is no one who has stood before the presence of Jesus and changed. Never will it happen. It is impossible. But if somebody has received second-hand information, they can walk away because they have no experience. Mm. You see, the problem is when you're sentimental. Come on. You see, the soul can be deceptive because you're feeling different emotions and you think it's spirituality. It's not. This is what the Bible says. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. If you taste God, uh, you're not turning back. Mm. That is why you find 
the apostles were willing to die for something they experienced. They didn't care if people believed or not. Mm -hmm. They are willing to die. Do you realize that me and you today, who used to be considered Gentiles, if it was not for Paul, we would not be saved. Mm -hmm. The 12, the assignment number one was among the Israelites first. Jesus never got anyone born again. Do you know that? Jesus himself, he never got anybody born again. He had people following him, but he did not offer them salvation yet. Mm -hmm. Salvation was to come out of the 12 for Israel. He came as a sacrifice that they needed to witness about for people to be saved. But the people who had witness for Jesus, they thought that their witness was only within Israel. Mm. Then Paul came and he said, listen, God has spoken to me and he's given me a revelation mm -hmm. that the Gentiles and the Jews are one person. Look at how God's spirit is entering them the same way the, yeah. that is entering us. But even those who walked with Jesus, when Jesus was telling them, go unto all the earth. They did not go because they knew the message was for Israel. Mm -hmm. But Paul, who was not among them, that Jesus appeared to. When he went and presented himself before the apostles, he, the apostles actually confirmed this person met Jesus. But when he came with a different message, they realized really God has sent this guy to the other people, not us. Mm. Remember, Peter, even after Paul came, when Cornelius was sent, sent uh, uh, people to go and get Peter to come to his house by the order of God. Peter was given a vision by God and he refused to obey God and God told him, don't call what I've made clean unclean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter never believed truly that the Gentiles could be saved. Why? Because he was not sent to them. It was Paul who was sent to them. But after he heard the message of Paul, and now there is a man who does not know God, but once God has been given a vision with an address of where Peter is, and God speaks to Peter, Peter comes down and he finds this man that God spoke to him that was sent from there. He believed that God wants everybody to be saved. So he was made a witness to the vision that God gave him because of Cornelius. Amen. So the question again is this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. So from today, I'm just going to make it very simple. Stop praying for people to be saved. Start praying for the laborers that will bring them to salvation. Mm. Amen. That's how simple it is. You need to recognize as a child of God, who are you sent to? Uh -huh. When God called me, do you know who he sent me to first? Armenians. Amen. After he sent me to Armenians, he sends me to Hispanics. After Hispanics, he sent me to Caucasians. After Caucasians, he sent me to people of my color. Then the last people that I'm actually being sent to is my own countrymen. I wasn't sent to them first. 
So if I went to them first, they would have never received me unless there is a witness about me. Wow. <laughs> that is why Jesus went to his own and they rejected him. Mm. You know, this message needs a lot of thumbs up mm -hmm. because this is just giving you a major key. Major. Yeah. This just gave you a major key. Amen. How do we know who we are sent to? That's a good question. Who listens to you? Mm. It's really that simple. Mm. What, is, what is my primary principle? Make sure the door's closed. What's my, pre what's my primary principle of ministering to people? If I know somebody doesn't listen to me, I will not speak. Is that not true? Yeah. You guys know that. Yeah. I always measure who has been sent to me or who I am sent to according to their level of actually listening. Not hearing me, but listening. Because somebody can hear me by their need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. When somebody needs something, they will do anything to get what they want mm -hmm. and then they will no longer listen. Mm -hmm. True. Oh Jesus. oh, Jesus. This is why when you evangelize, some people believe. When you evangelize, some people don't believe. They can even stone you. It's because you are not sent to them. Come on. When Jesus went into a city, people didn't listen to him. He didn't force himself. He moved on. He knew, okay, this is not where I'm supposed to be. Mm. Somebody shout glory. Glory. This thing is simple. Uh -huh. You see how simple that is? Yeah. <laughs> Moses was not sent to take people into the promised land. God said, I have sent you to bring my people out of Egypt. Mm. From the beginning. <laughs> so him failing to bring them into the promised land was always the plan. Mm -hmm. Joshua was supposed to bring them into the land and establish them. Not Moses. So you have to know your lane. <laughs> Moses was sent to the older generation. Joshua was sent to the younger generation. This thing is very simple. Some of you have thought you're battling demons and <laughs> devils. It's not. You are just talking to the wrong person. Wow. <laughs> so I want you to know this mm. by the Spirit of God. Amen. It is the desire of God to prosper you, to bless you. Amen. But you have to understand that your sal the salvation of your family is very important to God. That's why God brought you into that family. Mm. Wow. But God bringing you into that family so that you can call for laborers into the family. Wow. Wow. The love of God for your family chose you to be the one that will come as the first witness. Mm. That they will see that there is transformation. But your job was to call laborers to come for your family. Mm -hmm. It was not for you to harvest them. You will harvest other people. Mm -hmm. Do you realize Jesus said something very interesting? He said, a prophet is not honored in his own home. Mm -hmm. You are trying to look like the man of God of your family. They will reject you. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. My family came to believe in me because they saw. Ah, is this all? Look? And me being the Agnes, nah. How is this guy doing? The, wait, what? Seeing things that my older brother called me, calls me father. But he was not the first one to call me father. After they had seen and seen and seen too many witnesses, they said, nah. 
ah, we need to take advantage of this or we'll be the one missing out. Yet this is our thing. They fought me the most, but they love me the most. They defend me the most. Not because they believed first. There were witnesses who confirmed who I was to them. You see, some people will undermine you because of what they know you used to be. That is why you are just a witness that needs to witness that other laborers will come for them. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Remember John was prophesied by another before John came. Mm -hmm. Somebody witnessed for John so that when John came, they knew this is John that is preparing the way. This must be that Elijah they spoke about. You're not getting it. When Jesus came, they saw what he was doing. They said, this one is like that Moses they used, the one Moses spoke about. This is, is it the one that Isaiah spoke about? Let us confirm. Notice there was always a witness for who was coming. Do you know why Muhammad is a false prophet? There is no witness of him in the Bible except there will be many false prophets among you. (laughs) It's really that simple. When they pick up the Bible and say, oh, the the, the Bible says there will be another witness, uh, uh, the spirit of truth will come. They try to use that line to confirm that the Bible confirms Muhammad. Absolutely doesn't. Because the Bible says it will be in you. (laughs) <laughs> so we already know it's not him it's impossible so anyone that doesn't have a witness is in trouble 